Hey everybody, this is Brian and welcome to the 86th Qt tutorial with C++ and GUI programming. Um, go ahead and choose console application. And today we're going to be doing more advanced uh, binary output, input output. So we'll just call this uh, bin io2. And let's just throw this in the usual location. Hmm, my microphone's got a bunch of knots in it. I think the cat's been playing with it. Anyway, sorry to get sidetracked. Okay, so the basic premise of what we learned in the last tutorial was that you could take objects and output them to a file stream. Well, this time we're going to do relatively the same thing, but we're going to output a class to the file stream. So let's just uh, add new, and we're going to make a C++ class. Let's just call this person. Notice how it makes person h and person.cpp, and just next, next, and we have our basic person class here. And you notice how there's really not much to the person class at all. So we're just going to add a few things here. And we're just going to say uh, include qcore. I know people hate it when I do this, but it, it saves time. Now we've got our constructor, and we're just going to say int age. And normally you would use a getter and a setter. Um, this is actually very bad form to do it this way, where you have your variables public ex publicly accessible. But like I said, we're trying to save time, and you already know how to do all this stuff, so we're just making a very simple class. All this class does is hold the age and the name. Now, what we need to do is, in our main, actually add a few includes. So we'll say include the class we just made. And let's just uh, cute core. There we go. Then we're going to want two functions save and load. And you guessed it, one saves and one loads. So the first thing we need to do is actually make a person. And we'll just call this uh, person1. And we'll say person1 dot age. Oops, something grabbed my mouse. And we're going to say equals 36. And person1 dot name. We're going to say is Brian, because that's me. And we're going to make another person. Just for the sake of argument here, we're going to make two of these. Say person2. We're going to say 18, and we'll just give it my daughter's name, Heather. All right, now that we've got our two person classes, or our people, as we should say, um, we're going to actually create a queue file and you know stream this out. So we'll say queue file. And we'll say file. And put this, you know, wherever you've been putting your files. And we'll just call this people.txt. Now, remember, we're not actually, you know, don't get thrown by the .txt. Um, we're just doing that so you can simply open up a notepad and kind of peek at the contents if you really want to. Um, it is a binary file, though, so chances are it's just going to be nothing but gibberish. And we're going to say file.open. And we want to do QIO device. We want write only because we're going to write to the file. So if we could not write to the file, then we're just going to simply say QDebug. And we're just going to output here. Whoops. Help if I got it in the quotes. Could not open file. That way we've got some just, you know basic debug logging here kind of show us you know if something catastrophic happened with the file system and then we exit out otherwise if we can do it we're just going to say q data stream and we'll just call this out give it a reference to our file and then of course out set version and then we want to do the q data stream and we want the version of this which is going to be cute and the newest one which I believe I'm on 4.7 although I hear the, the 
Qt 5 is scheduled to come out soon. I could be wrong. Anybody else hear anything about that? Let me know. All right, scroll down here. And you know, we're just we're just doing some basic output here. So we're just going to say out person 1 out person 2. So we're just going to output our two classes out to the file. Say file.flush, and we have no, nothing new here. I mean, this is all everything you already know. All right. Now, what do you think is going to happen when we go to run this? Well, let's find out. Let's actually go here and let's say save. Some of you are probably snickering because you've made this mistake before. Oh, wait a minute. No match for operator in out. Hmm. What does that mean? And you see, oh my gosh, catastrophic error. I mean, all these things just exploded behind it. Well, if you remember from your C++ book, you did buy one, didn't you? Um, there was a chapter on operator overloading. So if you go out to C++.com, let me see if I can expand this, tutorial slash classes two. Um, they have this very, very nice chapter on overloading operators. And they tell you, you know, first off, what is an operator? Well, any of these symbols are an operator. Plus, minus, multiply, left shift, right shift, things of that nature. They're all operators. Well, in C++, you can actually override that behavior. And it's actually expected that you do that. Um, this is a perfect example of why you would need to do this. Because we're trying to left shift this person one class into the output stream. And person one class doesn't know how to do that. So we have to tell it, you know, what we expect of it in order to do this. So what I'm going to do here is we're just going to add new and we're going to make a header file. And we're going to call this uh hmm, that's a good question. What should we call this? Let's call this overloads. And then we've got our header file. Notice how there's no source file with it. It's just our header. And we are going to give it a few includes here. Oops. We'll give it person.h. And we're going to say include qcore. Now we have our includes. Now what we need to do is actually override the operators so that we can at any time tell it what we want it to do and how we expect it to act. So data stream and we need to say the reference to the operator and we want the left shift operator and we'll call this Q data stream out and we want a constant person class and we're just gonna call this person Let's see here. Somebody had asked me once in a while if I could just do that so you guys could see the code. All right. Now we can just pretty much copy and paste this because they're actually very similar and pretty much the same thing. Call this in. These are our function prototypes here, which are needed. And then we're going to actually implement these. And if you're like me, when you first read your C++ book, you did buy one, didn't you? Um, when you read it, you got to the chapter on operator overloading, you thought, this is fascinating, but when am I ever going to use this? Well, this is one of those times. So we're going to write a person class to the stream. And we're going to say out person dot age and person that name and then we're going to return the output stream so really all we're doing here is we're telling it exactly how to put this class into the output stream and remember anything that we do we must do the opposite so we'll say read in a person class and we'll say person equal and then in we want to 
now that we've got a new person class here because remember we may be reading it in and we don't actually have a class yet so what we're going to do is we're going to read in the age and then you guessed it the name and then we want to return the input stream so real basic operator overloading we got here um, we're going to override left shift and right shift I believe those are called left shift and right shift um, somebody please correct me if I'm wrong it's been forever since I even done this um, and then we implement the overrides and really all we're doing is we're telling exactly how we want that at output it in what order and remember you have to read it in in the same order now actually let me throw that back up there make sure we're in the right file here we are alright now we're in main what we can do is do an include and we include our overloads and if you remember back from our C++ tutorials anything that you include is going to be prepended meaning it's just like putting the code right here so let's save and run this and Oh, it's luck would have it. We did something wrong here. Passing constant person as this argument of person. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, I see what the problem is here. We have it as a constant. We can't do that. Jeez. Sorry about that. Like I said, it's been a while. So let's real quick review here. We don't want a constant because constant means we can't change it. And we're actually changing it when we read it in. So for the output, we want a constant because we don't want to change it. For the input, we want to change it, so there's no constant. So let's run this. Hmm. Definition of implicitly declared person class. Hmm, yes. Let's review real quick. I want to make sure we've got this. We've taken out the person constructor, and there's no person constructor here. Now everything should line up and run just fine. There we go. So we ran this. We haven't outputted anything, but we did write out to the text file. And we'll just grab an instance of Explorer, and there it is. And as you can see, there's our two classes, Brian and Heather. So now we want to be able to read that in. Now you may be asking, why do you even need person.cpp? Well, you really don't for this example, because we're not really doing anything. So you could get rid of that if you really wanted to. All right, there's our overloads, there's our main. So now we want to load this up. All right, so we'll get rid of that. We're just going to create two variables and not initialize them. Use the same file. We want read only. And we'll call this in. In, and we're just going to do in person one and person two. Don't need to flush, but we do need to close. And then we're just going to say uh, qdebug person one dot age and Actually, let's, sorry, let's flip this around. Let's say person1.name. We're gonna just going to say, you know, name is and then the age. So, got that. Let's hide this again for you. There we go. And we want to read in person two. Or I should say we want to output to person two. We've already read it in. Now I'm going to come on out save. You don't really need to. I mean, it would just write the file again. And we're just going to run this and see what happens when we load it. And sure enough, Brian is 36, Heather is 18. So that, in a nutshell, is I would call that more advanced. Uh, binary input output and let's review really really quick just to make sure all this kind of sinks in here we've got a few files 
we've got our person class, which is just, you know, a representation of the data we want to store. We have our overloads file, which has the function prototypes for the operator overloads, and then it has the implementation of each one. And remember, we're just telling it how we want to write the data out and how we want to read it in. Um, C++ is an amazing and incredibly stupid tool. You have to tell it everything because it does exactly what you tell it to do. We have our implementation file for person, but it's empty because there's just nothing in there. And then we have our actual program, which you know we're importing overloads in person, and then we're just you know creating an instance, filling it with information, opening a file, setting the version, outputting it, flushing and closing, and then we're just doing the reverse. We're just creating a few instances, opening and reading the file, setting the version, um, reading in the objects, closing again, and then we're outputting to the screen. Very simple, very useful. So that's all for this tutorial. Um, this is Brian. Thank you for watching. You can find all this and more out on my website, voidrealms.com. Yes, I've really been pushing the website because you can go out free of charge and get the source code for this tutorial save yourself a little bit of typing or if you you know type it out and it's just not working you can just download the source and it should just work so uh, give me some user feedback I'm really kinda curious to hear what you guys wanna see in the way of tutorials in the near future we've covered a lot of topics and I'm kinda interested to see where you guys wanna go now please don't flood me with Brian let's make a 3D video game because those take you know a dozen programmers three years to make <laughs> we're talking something simple that you can digest in you know 15 minutes or less alright thanks guys